Good afternoon, this is Charlie Zies with Only PVC Pyramids. Uh, this video today is part of our continuing series on the fundamentals of pyramid science. Uh, this is part seven of that series and today's video is entitled The Torsion Field Research of Anatoly Akimov. Now this series we've had to put on hold for uh, several weeks uh, due to two factors. We were recently out at the Conscious Life Expo uh, delivering a talk and a sub we've done a subsequent video on the sacred geometry of Russian pyramids and Dr. Akimov's research is certainly important to uh, constructing uh, that theory and argument. Uh, but the second part to uh, our concern was the fact that the article that we're going to be discussing today uh, took a lot longer uh, to get through interlibrary loan. In fact, we ended up having to go out of the country after uh, uh, the Library of Congress told us that they had it in their possession and then subsequently said that they couldn't find it. So we've got the article uh, from Europe, uh, just got it a few days ago, and that's the reason for the delay. But let's uh, get started and we'll uh, see what Dr. Akimov has to say about the sacred geometry of cones and pyramids and their effect uh, on their ability to act as tor passive torsion generators. To review uh, our six core elements of pyramid science, we previously discussed the existence of the ether and the existence of torsion waves. And in our last uh, uh, episode, we discussed the uh, research of Dan A. Davidson and his uh, book, Shape Power. So this is a continuation of that uh, discussion about the ability of objects, including pyramids, to act as passive torsion generators. Now these next two pages are coming actually from the uh, uh, talk that I gave several weeks ago and the subsequent video on the sacred geometry of Russian pyramids. A Anatoly Akimov and his team conducted research into passive torsion generators and published their results in 1991. And that's the article we're going to be discussing here in a few minutes. They were particularly interested in studying the effects that cones of different sizes had on different varying processes. And in this case, they looked at uh, the effects of torsion fields on the crystallization of micellar structures. And we'll talk about what that means here in a few minutes. And in the context of this article, a cone can be considered uh, to be a pyramid with an infinite number of sides. Now, as I discussed in this uh, video and in the talk out in California, I had ordered uh, this article that we're going to be discussing from uh, Interlibrary Loan and was told that it was available both from the Library of Congress and from another source uh, as long ago as two months ago. But as I continued to wait uh, for the article, I subsequently was told that now suddenly neither uh, entity could find this article, and so I ended up having to go to Europe to get a copy of this article that I'm going to be presenting to you today. And because of that, uh, and, and the potential interest in this article, I'm going to go ahead and post that on my website. There will be a link to this article uh, in the comments section at the bottom of this video. So uh, to review the uh, uh, the, the results of this article, or a summary of this article that was published in David Wilcox's Divine Cosmos, uh, he stated that from this research, it was determined that the best passive torsion generators were formed by cones that were shaped into the phi ratio. And that what this tells us is the torsion waves are indeed phi spirals, since a cone that duplicates this pattern will harness the waves most strongly. And we do get essentially those, uh, I, when, when we read the actual results, we, we essentially uh, see the same uh, answers that David summarized uh, in his Divine Cosmos book. But I wanted to go through line by line with you the relevant pieces of this. And again, we're not going to go through all of it. We're only going to talk about the highlighted sections uh, because that's what's relevant today. But again, uh, that article is up and available for review on my website. 
So to begin with a study of the effects of physical fields on biological and microbiological objects is of great practical and theoretical interest. The effect of electromagnetic fields on these objects has been investigated most fully with the formation of the concept of macroscopic spinner fields, and here they mean torsion fields, uh, the possibility arose of using torsion radiations as a fundamentally new physical method of action. And in the research, it has shown that the occurrence of an S field, and let me explain that means a spin field, a spin portion of the torsion field, is related to quantization of a physical vacuum. And again, here physical vacuum means the ether. So uh, to translate English into better English for us, it is shown that the occurrence of a spin torsion field is related to quantization of the ether and therefore points to the multidimensional aspects of the ether in the creative process. Now the torsion state of the ether can be changed by an external disturbance and it can be kept in this state steadily. Thus the effect can be recorded similarly to a standing wave of a certain spatial frequency structure. On the basis of this, the source of a static torsion field does not radiate but controls the phase state of the physical vacuum or ether. Now, back to the underlying text here. The plane geometry of the ether, the physical vacuum, is distorted by means of macro bodies or objects of a certain size and shape and thus torsion fields of considerable strength can be created. And if these bodies have geometric dimensions, really key, with fulfillment of the golden section, then they can play the role of concentrators of the torsion field. Once again, what we're saying here, if the geometric dimensions fulfill the phi ratio or the phi spiral, uh, here they're calling it the golden section, they can play the role of concentrators of the torsion field. Now this article presents preliminary results obtained in a study of the effects of a uh, static torsion field on crystallization of micellar structures of biological systems and high-density lipoproteins of human blood plasma. Now, we're going to put this up for the non-scientists and even for the scientists in the group. Uh, micellar uh, structure uh, refers to micelles, and micelles are lipid molecules that arrange themselves in a spherical form in an aqueous solution. The formation of a micelle is a response to the amphipatic nature of fatty acids, meaning that they contain both hydrophilic regions and hydrophobic regions as well. Now the selection of biological systems for studying the effects of a static torsion field on biological structures is related to the fact that micellar formations as ordered biological systems can easily change structure under the effect of external physical fields and therefore the effect of the torsion field can be recorded by means of the change in the phase structure of micellarity. So to continue on with the results, the experimental conditions used uh, for the experiment as the source of the static torsion field were used both special generators and hollow physical bodies, and here they're talking about cones, of a certain configuration whose geometric dimension obeys the golden section. Again, we're not told exactly what that uh, means here, but I'm going to speculate that given the fact that the uh, pyramids built by Dr. Golod were uh, being built contemporaneous with uh, the publishing of this data, that this, these dimensions of the golden section um, were most likely uh, those same dimensions that were used by Dr. Golod 
in the construction of his pyramids. But cones, in, to continue on, of various materials were also used in the work. So uh, this research not only looked at the importance of, of the phi relationship, but also uh, the difference of materials and sizes of cones used in the research. A quartz plate with the appropriate biological fluid applied on it was placed in the static torsion field, and the control was an analogous plate with the same biological fluid placed in the hollow region of a body made of the same material, but whose geometric dimensions did not obey the golden section. And in the experiments, Dr. Akamoff used bile from human liver of a gallstone patient and high-density lipoproteins isolated from human blood serum by the precipitation method. Now, uh, on the uh, next slide, we're going to start to see pictures of the results. Figure 1 shows photomicrographs of the solid bile preparation obtained without the effects of the spinner field, figure 1A, and in a static torsion field, figure 1B. It is seen that the solid bile preparation has a fractal structure characteristic for crystals of micellar structures. Furthermore, it is seen that the static torsion field affects the fractal dimension of the crystals. More details of the large-scale fractal structure appear in the crystals of the preparation of the uh, torsion field sample in comparison with the control specimen. And these experiments had a stable reproducibility. And going down to the next paragraph, the static torsion field affects both the fractal character of the structure of HDLs when HDLs were analyzed and the additional anisotropic inclusions, it changes their numbers in size. And moving further down, when crystallization of such micelles occurs in a static torsion field, it, meaning the field acting through the spin state on the micelles themselves, will affect their diffusion and the size and shape of the fractals. And finally, it's necessary to point out the potential possibility of the, the effect of static spinner or torsion fields and torsion radiations on various media and objects. Thus, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate increases under the effect of a static torsion field. And finally, and this is important, I think, for future, uh, future consideration and discussion, the influence of torsion effects on the activity of viruses and bacteria is presently being studied. And the reason why I think that's important, uh, some of the research into chronic disease uh, that's been done by uh, researchers such as uh, Dr. Dietrich Klinghart point to the fact that 98% of the DNA in our bodies is really not our own, but is the DNA of microorganisms. And it would be fascinating to see additional research done, either that research done in Russia subsequently or uh, research that we may be able to do in the future in the United States on the impacts of these uh, uh, pyramid fields on bacteria and other microorganisms. Once again, what this is showing us in conclusion is that uh, torsion fields that are generated by cones and by extension pyramids that use the phi ratio or the golden section had the most important impact on the torsion fields, as did uh, specific uh, 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 materials that were used in the construction of these cones. So once again, the, the research of Dr. Akamoff, and there's much more that we want to talk about with his research as we are able to find and, and obtain uh, his additional research and perhaps get it uh, translated from Russian into English, you're going to find that one of the uh, uh, footnotes here is, a, is an article from Dr. Akamoff that's in Russian. We're going to try to get a copy of that and get it translated 
so that we can talk about that in future uh, uh, talks. But uh, again, to summarize Dr. Akamov's work, we see that uh, his research demonstrates that phi, spir phi uh, golden section ratios, and we believe that to be phi spirals, are very important in uh, affecting uh, this micellar crystallization that uh, was seen uh, when studying uh, high density lipoproteins and human bile. So I hope this was helpful, and as always, uh, tell your friends about us. Uh, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and as always, we thank you for listening, and you have a great day.